طيب الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد uh, so last week we stopped at the fourth naqid the fourth nullifier the fourth thing that takes the person outside of the fold of Islam what was the first thing that Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab rahmatullahi alayhi mentioned from the things that nullify Islam. He mentions 10. What was the first one? Ashuku billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one? Hmm? Na'am, munja'ala bainahu bain Allah wa sa'id. Whoever makes intermediaries between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and him, whereby he makes dua to them. And that is what? Kafara ijma'an. Tayyib. What's the difference between, or why did the Sheikh mention this second type, although it comes under shirk? Now, excellent. So most people don't see setting up intermediaries where you make dua to them. They don't see it as shirk. They call it tawassul bis salihin. They call it going through seeking nearness to Allah through the righteous people. And also, it's a lot. Well, it's one of the most common forms of shirk. The third nullifier that we studied last week was what? Naam. So. In that he mentioned how many in the third naqid, in the third nullifier, how many nawaqid in it did he mention within that? Naam, what were they? Okay, uh, naam, not considering them to be kuffar, doubting their disbelief, considering that they are all sahaha madhabahum, or consider, considering that they are actually upon the full, correct path. Taib. What was the fourth nullifier that the Sheikh mentioned, Rahimahullah? Man i'taqada, whoever believes and the hadiya ghayr hadi Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that a guidance better than the guidance of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or akmal, or it is akmal min hadi Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or it is more complete than the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did the Sheikh say? Kafara. Ijma'an Kaladin yufaddilun Hukma dawa'ala Fuhuwa kafirun Then he is A kafir Tayyib So note That the shaykh says Rahimahullah Mani taqada Whoever believes That a guidance Other than the guidance Of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Is more guided than The guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Another guidance Is more guided And better than the guidance Of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Is that understood Or That another guidance Or another man-made law is more complete or another legislation is more complete than the legislation of Prophet of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So these are the two that the Sheikh mentions. Also there's a, another mas'ala that is often talked about related to this naqid. What is it called? Now ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. And what is the terminology now? Al Hukum Allah. Ruling and governing oneself or land, or whatever it may be that one's governing, with other than the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With other than the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We mentioned some principles related to this chapter. What were they? Important principles that are like a muqaddimah, are like an introduction to understanding al-hukum bi ma anzal Allah. And note that this ruling by other than what Allah revealed, or this mas'ala itself, is one of the most prominent Differences between Ahlu Sunnah, the people of the Sunnah, and who? Ahlu al Bid'ah, the people of uh, innovation, misguidance, meaning the Khawarij. And this was the first issue in which Khilaf occurred or difference of opinion occurred. This is the first issue, the first fitna, the first Bid'ah to come into this Ummah. Because the Khawarij. They were the first deviant sect to appear in this ummah. This shows how dangerous they are. They fought against the companions. They killed Ali radiallahu anhu. They killed Mu uh, Uthman radiallahu anhu and many companions. And they would say, "In al hukmu illa lillah." Sahih is true. Verily, the religion or the ruling is for Allah subhanahu wa taala. The judging is for Allah subhanahu wa taala alone. Taib. Lakin, and they would also say, وَمَن, also say وَمَن لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَزَلَ فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ So they would use verses from the Qur'an of Allah However what? 
they would what? Misunderstand them and misinterpret them. That's why last week one of the principles was what? Khilaf Ahlu Sunnah Ma'al Khawarij, the Khilaf of Ahlu Sunnah with the Khawarij in most cases is to do with what? Understanding. Adilla. It's understanding the evidences. So the Khawarij, you will find that in most cases they will use as evidence verses from the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pay attention. They will use verses from the Quran of Allah to justify their belief. Why is that? Because the verses of Allah require interp- interpretation, sah? The Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires interpretation and we need to understand it in a certain way. The understanding of the companions. Like in they divert from the understanding of the companions and they understand these evidences from the Quran foreign to the understanding of the companions. Foreign to the understanding of the companions. Because if they truly were to follow the Quran and Sunnah upon the understanding of the companions, would they fight against the companions? Of course not. That's why when Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, when he went to the Khawarij, when Ali sent him to debate with them, one of the things that he used as proof for him and against them is he said, I've come from the companions of the Prophet. I have come from Ali radiallahu the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his in-law. So he said, I've come from the companions. وَلَيْسَ فِيكُمْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدْ And there is not one of them amongst you. So that shows from this narration we understand and this understanding of Abdullah ibn Abbas who the Prophet made dua for to understand, have understanding of the Qur'an is that the Khawarij, they understood the Qur'an in a way that the companions did not understand the Qur'an. That's what caused their misguidance. And from that time up until today, that's exactly how they are. The Khawarij will use evidences, like in it's the way that they're misunderstanding. Whereas sometimes with the Sufiya, those that worship the graves or do du'a to the dead and so on, they'll say things like, I went to the grave and the person in the grave spoke to me. Or someone went to the Prophet wasallam's grave, Ahmed al-Rafa'i went to the Prophet's grave and the Prophet Stuck his hand out Things that don't make sense Like in the Khawarij They will use evidences from the Quran In most cases Very rarely do the Khawarij Use the Quran as The, the Sunnah as evidence That's why Umar radiallahu anhu said Debate them with The Sunan Wal Athar Because The Quran is Hamalul Awjuh You can Interpret it in different meanings that are obviously incorrect but different to the understanding of the companions. So, what are some of the principles that we studied last week? You shouldn't, technically, you shouldn't be looking in your notes. You should not be looking in your notes. Why? Because today, when you came to the class, inshallah, when you've come to the class, we're now studying new knowledge. So, the knowledge that you're studying today, somewhere along the line before next week, you're expected to understand it and to memorize it. Maybe not word for word. However, at least know what these principles were. And the benefit of knowing principles or learn, learning principles is that you don't have to remember everything that the teacher said under that principle. Like in, if you memorize the principle, understand the principle, then it opens up the doors of understanding for you. That's why the, the um, scholars would say, Man haram, man hurim al usul, hurim al usul. Whoever has been deprived from the usul, the foundations, hurim al usul, he has been deprived from reaching his goal. Is that understood? Taib, what were some of these principles? Excellent. Fagdu ain. Fagdu ain is what? Nah, it's obligatory upon everyone. Fagdu ain is that thing which is obligatory upon every single one of us. For example, a tawheed. 
Is it not wajib upon every single one of us? We can't say he's already said the shahadatain for me. La. Fadduain is that which, like the salah, for example. Salah is wajib upon every single one of us. So it's, a, uh, it's compulsory for every single Muslim to rule by the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another principle. One, two, if a person falls into an act of kufr, it doesn't matter how many times they fall into it. One, once, if you fall into it once, and if you fall into it a hundred times, it's exactly the same. Yes, the one that is that is doing it a hundred times has fallen into a hundred times is worse in terms of sin. Like in, in terms of ruling, they share the same, which is what? Kufr. Type. And why am I saying this? We'll understand in today's lesson, inshallah. We'll understand this principle in today's lesson. Tayyip, what else? Uh, I mentioned uh, those who uh, uh, defend between wuzu and uh, mistake and uh, people that uh, make a mistake. Uh, nah. So, the hukum of Qayyim Ma'azalallah is an individual responsibility. It is not specific to the rulers. It is not specific to the rulers. And why is this important? Because today again you will find the khawarij in every single sitting that they have, in every single lesson they will tell you the hukama kufar, the hukama kufar, and the hukama kufar. As for Ahlul Sunnah, their concern is not the hukam. They don't care about the hukam. Like in Ahlul Sunnah, they care about the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, preserving the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب, another principle. نعم أهل السنة يجمعون بين النصوص. Although I don't, I, I thought we took that principle in the مقدمة. لكن I'm talking about the principles we studied last week. لكن صحيح you're right. أهل السنة they combine between different evidences. نعم كفر is of two types. Major كفر and minor كفر. Major كفر it takes the person outside of what Islam. Minor كفر does it take the person outside of Islam? لا. It just means that the iman is not complete. The iman is deficient. The same goes for dhulm, oppression, and the same goes for fisq. So there's major oppression in the shirk Allah dhulmun azim. Allah says very little shirk is major oppression. Lakin there is dhulm, which is less than that. Which is it doesn't take the person outside of Islam. Excellent. Now, sinning or sins are of two types F- When you look at it from one angle When you look at sins from one angle They are of two types They are those sins that are haram Or they, those sins that are kufr disbelief within themselves When you look at that sin It is a disbelief If it is done for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Or that sin itself For example, making sujood to other than Allah Throwing the mushaf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala On the Floor Insulting the Anbiya of Allah The Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And so on Insulting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Insulting the Prophets Insulting the Quran and so on Or degrading it That is kufr itself You don't need to say Do you think it's halal for you to do that Or do you think it's haram for you to do that Lab. In any case In every case it is muharram However there are sins that even if a person does do them, it doesn't take him outside of Islam. As long as he doesn't say it is halal. Or as long as he doesn't disbelieve in this ruling. For example, al-khamar. The, the, the simplest example is khamar, alcohol. If a person says that it is not haram, it's halal. Yani, there's nothing wrong with it. If he says that, then they, even if they don't drink it, then they are a disbeliever, a kafir. Why? Nah, because he has fallen into making something halal, making something haram halal. And the opposite goes, making something that is haram, uh, or, or making something that is haram, making it halal. The opposite to that. Taib. So the sins are of these types. Taib. Taib. Uh, nah. Uh, that, that, we're coming to that now Ruling by the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh, by Ruling by other than the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala How many scenarios did we study last week? Six or seven What were they? 
Who can explain them? Or one by one? We'll take, take one. Say one. Istihlal. Making something halal. What is the meaning of istihlal? Making something halal. Oh, so, um, or, or can you give me an example, for example? Um, the person says that some example is when you're passing drinks pub because he believes it's halal. No. A person, istihlal means, and istihlal is a grave sin. It's a serious sin. Istihlal is when you say something that Allah has made haram is halal. Something that is haram in the sharia, clear-cut haram in the sharia, you say it is halal. Something that is clear-cut. And in our, the example that we're studying now, for example, someone says, it's permissible for me to rule by other than the sharia of Allah. It's permissible for a person to rule by other than the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person says that, they have fallen into something which is called istihlal, which literally means making something halal. They have made what was haram, they've made it halal. And what was haram is what? Ruling by other than what Allah revealed. So if you say it is halal, then you have what? Fallen into an act of istihlal, which is kufr, disbelief. So that takes the person outside of the fold of Islam. So that type of hukum bighayri ma'anzal Allah, or that type of ruling by other than the legislation of Allah, is kufr, is disbelief. However, how do we know if someone says something is halal? Or if someone believes, how do we know if someone believes something is halal? By speech or writing. By speech. Or writing. By speech something that they say, yeah, and say confirming and saying, yeah, it's not even halal, it's not even wajib, or it's halal for me to do so. Or them obviously writing, which is equivalent to them saying it. And what are we trying to avoid there? We're trying to avoid saying that because someone falls into a sin, it shows he believes it is halal. And that's again something that the Khawarij do. For example, they will come to say, مثلاً, the Hukam, the Muslim rulers, and they will say the fact that they are ruling by man made laws show that they believe it's halal for them to do so. Is this understood? So they say because they are doing it, they are ruling by man made laws, it shows that they think it's halal. Like, is this correct? No. By a person doing a sin It doesn't mean that they believe it is halal And every time the khawarij tries saying to you Hukum Allah, If a person does it He's a kafir Rules by other than the sharia of Allah Because he believes it is halal Take them back to any other sin Mention the sin Riba Interest If you see someone indulging interest Methal an interest You say okay the person that's using interest, indulging in interest, then he is also a kafir. You say to them, then he is also a kafir. If they say, la, la, he's not a kafir. You say, why? What's the difference between what he has done, what he has done? They're both, they've only done this sin. They've only committed this sin. Have you understood? The second type of well, the second scenario is what? Minhum ظالم لنفسي لا. That verse, uh, that verse uh, uh, mentions that the Muslimun are sabiqun bil khayrat. Then there are the muqtasidun. The sabiqun bil khayrat mean those that do the wajibat, things that are obligatory upon them, and that stay away from the things that are haram. And then there's the muqtasideen. They are the ones that do the wajibat. But everything that is wajib upon them, they don't do. Although they stay away from the haram. Then there's the zalim li nafsihi. The zalim, the one that oppresses himself, is the one that falls into sins. Lakin, all three of them are what? Believers. All three of them are believers that Allah talks about Surah Al-Fatih. The second scenario of ruling by other than the Shira of Allah. Juhud. Denying. Juhud and Takdeeb are similar. Denying that this is even the Shari'ah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
denying that this is even the sharia of Allah. This third type, takdeeb, and to belie, to disbelief in the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Musawa, to say that ruling by Allah's law and ruling by the British uh, constitution are exactly the same. Alhamdulillah, the most important thing is that we're all happy and everyone's safe. So ruling by the sharia of Allah, the legislation of Allah and the constitution of any western, the constitution of man-made laws is okay. As long as we establish equality. So that person has said it's equal, whether it's whether you use the sharia or anything else. The most important thing that you established equality. That is also kufr because he has made something similar to the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disbelieved in the verses that talk about the fact that وَمَنْ أَحْسَلُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمَةً Who is better than Allah Jalla wa'ala in hukum. Taib, what else? At-tafdeel. And what is tafdeel? Excellent. To believe that man-made laws are actually better than the legislation of Allah. What was the previous one? He said that they were? They're the same. But this one's saying, La, you know what? The legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better. The legislation of Allah is better. Okay? And this day and age, you know, it's a bit barbaric, or we're going back to the Stone Ages and so on and so forth. All of that is disbelief because he believes that these man made laws are better than the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taib, what else? Tabdeel, excellent. And what is Tabdeel? Tabdeel literally means replacing gone. Fantastic, excellent. Tabdeel means to change, to rule by other than the Sharia of Allah. However, to say that. That thing that you've changed it to is actually the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, let's say, Mathalan, uh, the, 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 the punishment for the, if you live in a Muslim land, the punishment for the one that drinks alcohol, the punishment is that they lashed 40 or 80 times, difference between and the mujtahideen, the sahaba. Taib, let's say 40 times. If a person now comes and says, Anyone that drinks alcohol, they'll be imprisoned for 40 days. And that is what Allah has legislated. Allah has legislated that they're imprisoned for 40 days. What has that person fallen into? Tabdeel. Why has he fallen into Tabdeel? He's not only replaced it, but what? He claims that this is the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we shall see some of the narrations of the Salaf, that is what the Jews fell into during the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So all of the verses that talk about, يعني, some of the verses that مثلا, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ أَزَلَ فَأُولَاكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ The Mufassirun, they say that it was revealed upon the Jews. And what was their crime? What did they do? They done two things. Huh? Naam. So for example, during the time of the, يعني, the Jews, they had the Torah. And the Torah, Torah had the had of the regiment. It had the punishment of stoning to death the one who falls into fawahish. They understood. Who falls into uh, fornication. The punishment was that they be stoned to death. That was in the Torah. Pay attention. So what they did was, or what they used to do, is if the nobles of the community would fall into that act, they wouldn't punish them. But if the people that weren't from the nobles or the lower class from amongst their community, if they would fall into that same act, they would establish the, the regiment or they would stone them to death. Is that understood? So that's what they used to do. However, they obviously realized that this was unfair. So they said, you know what, let's make a universal rule for all of them, for every one of them. So they started to do what was called Mathalan, they would get the person that's fallen into that sin to sit on a donkey and they would cover them up. And they would darken them as a way of shame. And then they would make them walk in the marketplace on that donkey or ride that donkey amongst the people. So that was like the shame of walk. The, the, what? the, the walk of shame. That was the walk of shame. When they did that, they avoided 
the what? Stone him. But when the Prophet sallallahu asked them, is that what you find in your book? They said, yes, that is the, sh- that is the ruling of Allah. That is what we find in our, in our Torah. So what did they do? Tabdil. Not only did they come with a new law or a new form of punishment, but they claimed what? It was from Allah. It was found in the Torah. So they did not only establish a new law, but they were claimed it was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that type of, if anyone does that in our sharia, they are what? Kafir. They have belied Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, disbelieved in the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they've lied upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that type is also kufr. Taib. Any other types? Okay, excellent. That was disbelief. Excellent. You're right. That was one of the ones that we've studied. Excellent. Who said someone said something for me? Tagheer. Changing. Okay, who can explain that? Okay, go on. Now, ruling by other than the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any of the previous mentioned sins. For example, without denying the law of Allah, without saying this is the law of Allah, without saying it is better than the law of Allah, without saying it is equal to the law of Allah. So a person merely rules by the sharia, by other than the legislation of Allah. Without claiming that it is from Allah, without claiming that it is better than the law of Allah, without claiming it is equal to the law of Allah, and without rejecting and denying the rule of Allah And without saying it is halal for me to rule by whatever I want That type is changing Taghir What is the ruling on that type? Kufr dun kufr It is minor kufr Meaning it doesn't take the person outside of Islam It doesn't take the person outside of Islam It does not take The person outside of Islam And This is the one that there's difference between Ahlu Sunnah and the Khawarij Because the other ones Everyone agrees There's no difference Even the Khawarij will say Yeah if anyone believes Obviously they're gonna say that anyway If anyone believes that Another law is better than the law of Allah They believe he is a kafir So all of these first five or six scenarios Everyone is in agreement over Like in Ahlu Sunnah differ with the Khawarij On this one Principle on this last one. So Ahlul Sunnah say just because someone rules by other than the Sharia of Allah, they are not a kafir. Whether it's an individual, whether it or whether it is a hakim, it is a ruler. Whether it is a a, a constitution, man-made laws, or whether it's him. Constantly falling into oppression Mathal in his home For example For example If a man doesn't provide for his family He's falling into a what? Sin Has he ruled by what Allah revealed? Huh? No he hasn't So if a man constantly does that For years and years on end Does it make him a kafir? No It doesn't make him a kafir But has he ruled by what Allah revealed? No Likewise if a person is method and the leader of a Muslim country Like in the constitution that they are using Is democracy, man-made laws If he doesn't believe any of the previous mentioned issues Believing it's halal and so on and so forth And he knows that he's sinning And he knows that the sharia of Allah is better But he says, you know What can we do? This is what people want nowadays What can we do? Then that person is not a kafir is it understood? Also, some people say there's a difference between ruling by other than what Allah revealed on one occasion or two occasions and ruling by a whole man-made law, مثلا, in uh, yeah, a whole man-made law constitution. They say there's a what? Difference between 
ruling by whatever than Allah revealed in one case or two cases. For example, you're the judge in the Islamic court and you take bribery once or twice. Have you ruled by what Allah revealed? They say no. Obviously, the, the person hasn't ruled by what Allah revealed. But they say that is not kufr because he's only done it once or twice. Like if he makes it the norm whereby he uses man-made laws and he governs the whole country and he governs the, governs the Muslims with that, they say he's a kafir because now he's constantly falling into ruling by other than what Allah revealed. Is this correct? Why not? Why is this incorrect? Huh? There's no difference between once or twice. Khalas. If a person falls into kufr of disbelief once, we don't say it's disbelief, but for them, let's using their argument against them. If you're saying ruling by everything what Allah revealed is always kufr and it takes the person out of Islam, how can you say if he does it once or twice, he's excused? It's like me saying to you, Daib, if you make sujood to other than Allah once, twice, khalas, that's fine. But anything more than that, we're going to make you a mushrik. Doesn't make sense. You can make, if they say, you, it's like saying you can make dua to the dead and call upon the dead to provide you with provision, rizq, on one or twice, yeah, on one occasion or twice or two occasions. But anything more than that, you become a kafir. That is false. And it logically doesn't even make sense. What is the difference between once and ten times? Disbelief is what? Disbelief. طيب. So that is the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And I'm going to read some of the statements of the Salaf al Salih from the uh, classical scholars. طيب. And the reason why, obviously, we're, I'm mentioning this because we're studying the Nawaqid al Islam. Number one, because we're studying it. But the second reason is because when you go on social media, you find certain individuals that are calling to the Khawarij methodology that say to you that take the Shabab, that mislead the Shabab, the youngsters, the youth like yourself, under the guise of sticking up for the Sharia and saying that anyone that doesn't rule by the Sharia of Allah is a kafir. When in reality, that's not the methodology of Ahlu Sunnah, that's the methodology of the Khawarij that were fighting against Ali, Uthman and the rest of the companions. So they are their classical scholars are the Khawarij. And our classical scholars are the classical scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And everything that I've just mentioned, I'm going to mention the statements supporting that from the Aqeed of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And I'm only going to mention classical scholars. I'm going to mention one contemporary scholar, who, يعني, Sheikh Muhammad Ibrahim al Sheikh, who passed away some, يعني, maybe 40 or so years ago, if not more. And the only reason I'm going to mention him because the Khawarij love to mention him. And I'll mention the reason later on. Lakin, I'm only going to mention those classical scholars. So I won't mention Al Bani, Fozan, Ibn Uthaymin, Ibn Baz, although I can, and I've got their statements here. However, I won't. Because I want you to know that this is not a mujit belief or this is not a madakhila belief or a jamia belief. This is the aqidah of the Salaf al-Salih. And I will mention when every person passed away, every sheikh that I'm going to mention when he passed away. So from the very first individuals is the Sahabi Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. Abdullah ibn Abbas. And Abdullah ibn Abbas was a companion. And when we're praising people, the, the highest form of praising a person, other than a prophet calling him a prophet and a messenger, is to say he's a Sahabi. خلاص, if someone says to you someone is a sahabi, is a companion, you don't even need to look, was he trustworthy or not? Was he good in his, was he precise in his memorization or not? خلاص, sahabi is the best form of tazkiyah or praise. So Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said, regarding the interpretation of the verse of Allah, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ In Surah Al-Ma'i, the verse 44, Whoever doesn't rule by the in which Allah says, whoever doesn't rule by the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for ulaika humul kafirun, they are the kuffar. So that is what the verse. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu 
has many interpretations for this or many narrations have been narrated from Abdullah ibn Abbas in interpreting this verse and all of them are authentic and all of them are authentic some narrations are weak like in there are other narrations that are authentic that the scholars have made authentic declared to be authentic from them is the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas which he says man jahada ma anzala Allah whoever denies or rejects Wherever Allah reveals or revealed, فَقَدْ كَفَرَ Verily, he has disbelieved. وَمَنْ أَقَرَّ بِهِ and لكن, Whoever acknowledges it, لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِهِ لكن he doesn't rule by it, فَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ فَاسِقٌ He is a ظالم, and he is a fasiq. He is a zalim and he is a fasiq. So Abdullah ibn Abbas says, whoever denies or rejects the ruling of Allah, Jalla wa ala, whatever Allah revealed, then he is a kafir. Like in whoever rules by, whoever acknowledges the law of Allah, like in doesn't rule by it, then he is what? Zalimun wa fasiqun. He is has oppressed himself and he's a fasiq and he's not a righteous person uh, Imam uh, Abu Tabari mentioned that also Jami' al-Bayan uh, Ibn Abdul Bagh mentions that uh, uh, Al-Tabari in his tafsir of this verse also Imam al-Bani rahmatullah alayhi declared it sahih in his silsilat al-ahadith sahiha Imam al-Bani he has something called silsilat al-ahadith sahih where he combined a hadith hadiths that are authentic and he mentions that this is from them. Another narration from Ta'us. Ta'us, who was one of the students of Abdullah ibn Abbas. One of the tabi'een. He said, An ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Abbas, aidan fi qawlihi, he said regarding his statement of Allah, Jalla wa'ala, wa man lam yahkum man zalu fa'ulahikum hul kafirun. He said, Laysa bil kufri ladhi yadhabuna ilayhi. Laysa, it is not bil kufri, it is not the kufr, yad it is not the kufr that they are taking it to be or they've understood it to be. And who is he talking to? The Khawarij. He's talking about the Khawarij, saying it is not the kufr that you think it is. And the Khawarij used to say it takes and it's disbelief, major kufr, major disbelief. Like in Abdullah ibn Abbas here is saying like it is not the kufr that you believe it is, meaning it is minor kufr. That is also authentic. In another narration, Abdullah ibn Abbas said regarding this, Kufrun la yanqulu anil millah. It is kufr, it is disbelief, yes. Lakin la yanqulu anil millah. It doesn't take a person outside of the religion. So it is a form of kufr, which is minor, and it does not take the person outside of what? The religion. In another narration, he says, Kufrun duna kufr, wa dhulmun duna dhulm, wa fisqun duna fisq. He says it is kufr, which is the lesser kufr. And it is oppression, which is the lesser oppression. Meaning, it is, the, it is the type that doesn't take the person outside of Islam. And it is fisq, it is disobedience, and it is that which doesn't take the person outside of Islam. Again, that is also authentic. The fifth or the sixth narration, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he says, huwa bihi kufrun. In him there is kufr. In him, meaning the one that rules by other than what Allah revealed. Huwa bihi kufrun, there is kufr in him. Walaysa, and he is not, kaman kafara billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi. So yes, there is a trait of kufr or disbelief in him. Like in it is not kaman kafara billah. It is not like the one that disbelieves in Allah, disbelieves in His angels, His books, and His messengers. Why? Because anyone that disbelieves in Allah or His messengers or His books or His angels, he is what a kafir. He is no longer a Muslim. So he's saying it is not that form of kufr. It is the form of kufr of what? Nah. It is the form that is less than that. طيب. And there are many scholars that narrate that this is authentic. There are many scholars that narrate that this 
is authentic. From them, Al Hakim. Write these down. Al Hakim, who's got Abu Abdullah Al Hakim, who's got a, a book called Al Mustadagak. Secondly, Al Zahabi. Ibn Kathir. Muhammad ibn Nasr, Muhammad ibn Nasr al Marwazi. Abu Mudaffar al Sam'ani. And there's about 15 others. Lakin, I'll send that to you, inshallah, through the messages. Tayyib. That is Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. Radiallahu anhu. Tayyib. Let's look at some of the Imams from the Salaf. From them, Imam Ahmed, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatan wasi'a. Imam Ahmed, Rahmatan, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatan wasi'a. Imam Ahmed was asked, Su'alat ibn Hani, Su'alat ibn Hani, that is the name of the book. He was asked, he says, I asked Ahmed, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ مِنْ مَنْزَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَائِكُمْ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ قُلْتُ فَمَا هَذَا الْكُفُرُ Whoever, he mentioned the verse of Allah, whoever doesn't rule by the... Sharia of Allah or the law of Allah, he's a kafir. What is that kufr? He said to Imam Ahmed. Imam Ahmed said, Kufrun la yakhruju anil milla. It is kufr, disbelief, la yakhruju anil milla. That doesn't take the person outside of the fold of Islam. That is who? Imam Ahmed. He died 240. Imam Ahmed and he died 240. Also, secondly, Imam Muhammad ibn Nasr al Marwazi, rahimahullah, he died 294. He wasn't from Saudi Arabia, was he? Taban, if he died 294, can we say he was from Saudi Arabia? Hmm? Can we say he's a Madkhali? Or he's a Jami? No. Muhammad ibn Jami died in the 90s and in 1995. There's about a thousand years difference between them. طيب. Muhammad ibn Nasr al Marwazi, he says in his book, Ta'deem al Qadri Salah, he says, Walana fi hada qudwatun bima ruwiya anhum min ashabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa tabi'in. And in this, in this, and in these, in the fact that kufr is two types, major and minor. In it, there's a good example for us from the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that and the tabi'een and those that followed them. And it has been narrated from them, إذ جعلوا للكفر فروعا دون أصله لا تنقل صاحبه عن ملة الإسلام. And we have a good example in the salaf. The tabi'een and the, uh, the sahaba and the tabi'een In which they made kufr They gave kufr branches Meaning different levels And they said That it is a major type yani The asal, a major type And a type that doesn't take the person outside of Islam And the type that doesn't take a person outside of Islam And then towards the end of the narration, he says, "Min dalika qawl ibn Abbas, min dalika, and from that qawl ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu, like the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas in which he says, "Wa man lam yahkum bima anzal Allah, fa ulaika hum al kafirun." Taib. So he said, like the narration. So he said, the Sahaba and the Tabi'un they declared that kufr is of two types, like the narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas. So he's using who as evidence? The interpretation and the understanding of Abdullah ibn Abbas and he says that is the understanding of all of the companions and all of the what? And the tabi'in, those that came after him. طيب. The next one, Imam ibn Batta al-Ukbari who died 387. He has a book called Al-Ibana which is the book in Aqeedah. A book in Aqeedah. And he has obviously chapters, heading chapters, and then he has the verses or the ahadith or the narrations from the salaf or the ayat from the Quran. So he mentions a chapter, he says, Babu dhikri dhunubi alati tasiru bi sahibiha ila kufrin ila kufrin ghayra kharijin bihi anil millah or minal millah. 
So the chapter, the head title is what? Bab, in this chapter I will mention Dhunub, sins. Alati, those sins that don't take the person outside of Islam. So he's going to mention sins. He says, I'm going to mention sins that don't, or this chapter deals with those sins that don't take the person outside of Islam. And he mentioned in that chapter, Al-Hukum Ma Anzal Allah. Ruling by other than what Allah revealed. So he is saying that that doesn't take the person outside of Islam. And he mentioned narrations from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een. He mentions narrations from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een. Stating that ruling by other than what Allah revealed is what? Is kufr dun kufr, meaning it is the lesser of the two sin, the two types of kufr. So these three imams, I just want to prove to you, and whatever is to come, that saying kufr dun kufr or saying that kufr has two types is not something new. It is not a it is not a twenty first century bid'ah. Rather, this is this has always been the difference between ahlul sunnah and ahlul bid'ah. I acknowledge that some of you might find this difficult, like and even if you find it difficult, for now just understand it like that. And these narrations that I'm mentioning somewhere along the line, inshallah, you will understand them. طيب. The next narration is Abdul, uh, Ibn Abdul Bagh, rahmatullah alayhi. Ibn Abdul Bagh. Abu Umar Ibn Abdul Bagh, rahmatullah alayhi. Al Maliki. And he was a Maliki. He died 463. He says, in his book, Tamheed, وَأَجْمَعَ الْعُلَمَاءُ And the ulama, there's consensus amongst the scholars. عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْجَوْغَ فِي الْحُكْمِ That being oppressive in your ruling, meaning not ruling by the sharia of Allah, مِنَ الْكَبَائِرِ It is from the major sins. لِمَنْ تَعَمَّدَ ذَلِكَ عَالِمًا بِهِ It is from the major sins for the person that does it intentionally whilst knowing that it is a sin. He says, من الكبائر, it is from the major sins. طيب. In Islam, we know that there's shirk and there's kufr that take the person outside of Islam. But then there are also what? Major sins. And the belief of Ahlul Sunnah is that kabair or major sins don't take the person outside what? Outside of Islam. Major sins such as stealing, killing, murder, alcohol, and fawahish. These are major sins. But they don't take the person outside what? Outside of Islam. So he's saying that there's ijma' amongst the salaf, the ulama, that ruling by other than what Allah revealed is a major sin. And it is not what? Kufr that takes a person out of Islam. He says, fi an salaf. Many narrations, strong narrations have been mentioned by the salaf. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And Allah says, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ مَعْزَلَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ ظَالِمُونَ فَاسِقُونَ And Allah says, whoever doesn't rule by the sharia of Allah, they are kafirun, they are kufar, they are oppressors and they are fasiqeen, disobedient ones. He says, the shaykh says, رحمه الله, نَزَلَتْ فِي أَهْلِ كتاب. It was revealed upon who? The people of the book. It was referring to the people of the book. قَالَ حُذَيْفَ وَابْنَ عَبَاسِ ابْنَ عَبَاسِ and حُذَيْفَ يَمَانُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنَ They said, هِيَ عَامَّةٌ فِينَا It is also, it includes us as well. It entails us or includes us as well. قَالُوا They said, لَيْسَ بِكُفْرٍ يَنْقُلُ عَنِ الْمِلَّةِ It is not the kufr that takes the person outside of the fold of Islam. إِذَا فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ حَتَّى يَكْفُرَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ If a person rules by other than the sharia of Allah. From this ummah, he is not a kafir unless he disbelieves or until he disbelieves in Allah, his messengers, his angels and his books. Is that understood? There's a lot. Like I'll, I'll, somewhere I'll finish off with this one. Abu Mudhafar al-Sam'ani, he died 489. He died 489. He says in his tafsir, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْخَوَارِجَ And know that the khawarij يَسْتَدِّلُونَ بِهَذِهِ الْآيَةِ They use as evidence this verse, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ زَلَا فَأُولَكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ وَيَقُولُونَ And they say, مَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ كَافِرُ فَهُوَ كَافِرُ 
the Khawarij use this verse as evidence and they say whoever doesn't rule by the Sharia of Allah is a kafir. Wa ahlu sunnah as for Ahlu Sunnah, he says, قالوا, they said what? لا يكفر بترك الحكم لا يكفر بترك الحكم He doesn't disbelieve by merely leaving the ruling of the Sharia. By merely leaving the ruling of Allah and ruling by something else, the person doesn't become a kafir. So Abu Mudafar al-Sam'ani, he says what? He says that the Khawarij use this as evidence but they say what they say that the person that rules by other than the sharia he is what a kafir and he is also saying like in ahlu sunnah they say what that if a person rules by other than the sharia he is not what la yakfuru bi al hukum he does not become a kafir simply by ruling with other than what allah revealed is that understood طيب there are other narrations, lacking, inshallah, just to not bore you, I won't carry on. Lacking, there's one narration or one sheikh that I'm going to mention, Sheikh Muhammad Ibrahim al Sheikh. And the reason why I'm going to, he was the Mufti before Ibn Baz in, in Saudi. And the reason why I'm mentioning him is because those Khawarij that you see on social media, those Shayateen, they use him as evidence. Sheikh Muhammad Ibrahim al Sheikh, he has a book, it's a short risala, short book in which he talks about, he, well, he mentions in there that ruling by man-made laws, like the constitutions that we are uh, accustomed with today, he says that they are kufr, they are disbelief. Is that understood? He says what? That it is kufr. But simply by ruling with these sharias, these man-made laws, I mean, you are a disbeliever. Lakin, he retracted from that statement and he said exactly the same as what we've just said and what all of these imams have said. Meaning even, and he says, I'll read it out. وَكَذَلِكَ تَحْقِيقُ مَعْنَ مُحَمْدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مِنْ تَحْكِيمِ شَرِعَتِهِ وَالتَّقَيُّدُ بِهَا وَالنَّبْذُ مَا خَالَفَهَا مِنَ الْقَوَانِينُ وَالْأَوْطَاعِ وَسَاقِ الْأَشْيَاءِ So he says also, تَحْقِيقُ مَعْنَ مُحَمْدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The تَحْقِيقُ or establishing the meaning of Muhammad Rasulullah is from them or from it is using the Sharia as a reference point and sticking to it. And staying away from all of these man-made laws And constitutions uh, And whoever Those constitutions Whoever rules by these constitutions Man-made laws Or he goes to it for judgment Meaning he doesn't rule with it But he goes to In the courts of In the British courts that we go to here Or that people go to here مُعْتَقِدًا سِحَّةَ ذَلِكَ مُعْتَقِدًا سِحَّةَ ذَلِكَ وَجَوَازَةَ Whilst believing that it is sahih, it is correct to do so, meaning it is halal, وَجَوَازَهُ and that it is permissible to do so. Whoever believes that, for who kafir, he is a kafir. الْكُفْرُ النَّاقِلُ عَنِ الْمِلَّةِ He is falling into a kufr that takes him outside of Islam. So he says what, Shaykh Muhammad, Muhammad Ibrahim al Sheikh, if you fall into it as a sin, if you fall into it and you believe it is permissible or it is correct to do so, then he is a kafir. فَإِنْ فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ لَكِنْ If he does that, بِدُونِ اعْتِقَادٍ بِدُونِ اعْتِقَادِ ذَلِكَ Without believing, وجوازي, without believing it is permissible to do so, meaning he doesn't make it halal, فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ الْكُفْرُ الْعَمَلِي He's falling into the lower of the two levels of kufr, minor shirk, minor kufr. That doesn't take the person outside of the fold of Islam. Now, why did I mention this specific fatwa? Because the Khawarij, they use as evidence his previous book, but they won't mention to you his latter fatwa and the fact that he retracted from it. And that actually goes, goes against amana ilmiya. It goes against being honest in with regards to al-ilm so if you narrate a statement of an imam مثلا, Abu Hanifa, عليه, imam, imam Abu Hanifa Imam Malik Imam Shafi'i if you know that they had the old opinion and a new opinion which one should you give and tell people the new opinion but you shouldn't make it out as if his old opinion is what his new opinion as if that is his new opinion like in that shows that they are 
untrustworthy. In summary, if you've not understood any of that, like just stay away from those people that are the that are not known amongst the Ahlul Sunnah. When you're learning or when you're seeking knowledge and when you're listening to lectures online or listening to these sorts of topics online, make sure you listen to those people that are known for being upon the Sunnah and calling to the Sunnah. And stay away from those individuals that are known for deviancy and known for calling to the methodology of the Khawarij. And from their signs is that they say everyone that doesn't rule by the Sharia is a kafir. They say all of the hukam, all of the leaders are kuffar. They say they've left off jihad and so on. And you often see them saying madakhila, bootlickers and all of that sort of nonsense. Yeah, father. Uh, Next naqid. Naqid al-khamis. We're going to go back to the matan, the fifth naqid, the fifth thing that takes a person outside of Islam. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd. Allahumma aghfir lana wa li shaykhina wa hafadhu wa rafa'a qadrahu wa li muslimin ajma'in. Qala al-muallif rahimahullah. Al-khamis. Al-khamis. Al-khamis, man abghada shay'a bimma jaa'a bihi al-rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walau amila bih kafara ijma'a wa dalilu qawluhu ta'ala. ذلك بأنهم كرهوا ما أنزل الله فأحبط أعمالهم. طيب. This fifth ناقد, the Sheikh رحمه الله tells us, he's telling us that anyone who hates any sort of ruling or anything that has been revealed upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, that he's a kafir. Anyone who hates, من أبغض whoever hates. Shay'an, anything. Shay'an, nakira, fi siyaqi, ashad, ta'um. Anything. That, mimma ja'a bihi rasul. Whoever rejects, whoever hates, whoever hates and dislikes anything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with, walaw amila bihi, even if he acts upon it, even if he acts upon it, Kafara ijma'an He is a kafir By way of ijma' By way of consensus And the evidence for that Is the verse of Allah ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَرِهُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأَحْبَطْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ And before that Or the part before that وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَتَعْسًا لَهُمْ وَأَضَلَّ أَعْمَالَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Verily those that disbelieve in Allah That he has made their deeds fruitless He has made them Made their deeds fruitless or for them is a destruction, a great destruction, and their a'mal are fruitless. The actions that they are doing, they're fruitless. They're with no benefit. And then Allah mentions the reason. The reason being, as you can see on the mutton, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَرِهُ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأَحْبَطْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ That is because they disbelieve or they hated. They had hate for that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. فَأَحْبَطْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ And he nullified their actions. طيب. From the conditions of La ilaha illallah was what? المحبة To love the meaning of La ilaha illallah and everything that it entails. That is from the conditions of one's Islam to be correct. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that verily فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ by your Lord لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ they will not have proper belief correct belief until they come to you as a as one that judges between them ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا in that which you have judged They won't dislike it Because it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rather Rather they submit wholeheartedly And willingly To that which you tell them And judge with Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says It is not for a believing male Or a female, believing female that if Allah and His Messenger give a ruling on a certain thing, that they have a choice in the matter. 
So everything that Allah Jalla wa'ala legislated, it is wajib for us to submit to it and to love it. And to love it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, لا يؤمن أحدكم One of you will not have complete iman. حتى أكون أحب إليه until I become more beloved to him من والده وولده والناس أجمعين. One of you will not have complete iman, true iman, until I become more beloved to him than his father, child, or and all of the people. So Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, you're more beloved to me than everyone except myself. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, La Umar, your iman, hatta until you even love your, you love me before yourself. And then Umar said, Al-an Ya Rasulullah, now I love you more than myself. So it is wajib for the person and it is from the things that necessitate that one loves the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That one loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And that which was revealed upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Was what? The Quran of Allah And the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So we have to love everything that is found In the Quran and the Sunnah And we cannot hate any part of the Quran and the Sunnah Because it is legislation from Allah We can't hate it because it is a legislation from Allah Or we can't hate it solely because it is A legislation a legislation from the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So that is The type of hate That is haram This Has many form of, yani forms Or it comes in many forms Today for example, the movement of feminism. What do they hate? They hate all of the issues relating and all of the rulings pertaining to the woman in the Sharia of Islam. For example, the hijab. You will find that they have severe hate, extreme hate towards the hijab. Where they say that you should be allowed to wear you what you want. Women should be allowed to wear they wear what they want. So you will find those feminists, they're not actually just activists, like in the activists against the Sharia of Islam. They're fighting the Sharia of Islam. Also, for example, the ahkam of Al Islam is what? For example, Waqagna fi buyutikunna. Allah Jalla wa ala tells the women to stay in their homes by way of preserving them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have legislated that if a woman is traveling that she has a mahram, a male guardian with her as a form of protection to serve her, to look after her and so on and so forth. So they hate these sorts of legislations. Also, inheritance, when Allah says لِذَّكَرِ مِثْلُ حَظِّ الْأُنْثَيَينَ When Allah says that, the male gets double the female They have hatred to that They have hatred and severe dislike Extreme hate towards that That hate That they hate The fact that it is legislated That hate is kufr It is disbelief It is disbelief Likewise The letters community When they're hating the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To do with that perversion of theirs <laughs> Where they say Where they يعني, that, that sort of, Those sorts of stuff, right? They will say That it's not haram in the Quran Allah doesn't make it haram Clearly they haven't read the Quran Lakin, What they're hating is the fact that this is a legislation from Islam Put nature to one side Yes, by way of nature it is disgusting Like in by way of Islam it is also what? Haram or halal? Haram And where have we come to know that? From the Quran and the Sunnah From the Quran What do you think? They were being punished for the fun For fun La. The sin itself is a, is a major sin if a person falls into that, it's a major sin. Lacking 
those sorts of activists and those people that are insulting the Muslims for that, that are claiming to be Muslims, they are literally on the edge. Because what they're doing is they hate the legislation. Secondly, they say it is halal. It's not, Allah hasn't said made it haram, it's your backward interpretation. If people love one another, what's it got to do with you? That's what they'll say. So because of them saying that, they're literally on the edge. And that can lead them to leave in the fold of Islam. So when you see this stuff going on around on, the new, on, on Twitter and hashtag whatever, don't think it's just argument, argument. Nah, there's actually a aqidah side to things. A aqidah side to things, which is that that person can actually be an apostate for saying it is not haram. Even if they don't believe in, even if they don't, sorry, even if they don't do that. Or those evil acts of the billah. Lakin, if they say, love all and let love prevail, things like that. And they say, for example, that Allah hasn't made it haram. What are they falling into? Something we learned not long ago. It's the halal. They're saying that it is halal. Likewise, those people that say, those people that yani, do a nikah, obviously it's not nikah, like and they say they're doing nikah for the British marriage system. That is kufr as well. Why? Because it is now istihlal. It has, the person has gone from the realms or the, the, the boundaries of a sin to the boundaries of now saying it is halal. Tayyip. Mahal shahid, what, what we want to get to here now in our book that we're studying is that when a Muslim says these rulings that like it is haram in our sharia, they have hate towards what? Towards you or towards the, the actual ruling? They have hate towards the actual ruling. So these sorts of things are or come under this naqid, this nullifier, whereby a person has hate towards something that has been legislated in the Quran and the Sunnah because of the ruling of itself. And I will mention why I keep saying the ruling within itself towards in a, in a few minutes. Like if a person has hate towards these sorts of things because it is that, then it is haram. It, not only haram, it is disbelief. So for example, the, those people that say, why are men allowed to marry more than one wife? Why are they allowed to marry four wives? Now, I don't think it's correct. It's ridiculous. It's not fair. Where was... Saying things like that is kufr Because you're now countering what? The sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So it is no laughing matter So when you see these hideous people Writing things They don't know The severity of what they are actually writing And they will say haram police Even that term Haram police We shall see it in the next lesson inshallah That is istihza' bid-deen that is mocking the religion of Allah Jalla wa ala. It is haram, it's not permissible You're mocking Because enjoining the good and forbidding the evil Is that not from the sharia of Allah? So by saying haram police Oh here come the haram police That, that person is on the edge Literally on the edge And they are close to being a kafir They are close to being an apostate It is something which is serious When you look at it like that It's no laughing matter it's not about just getting your own back and sticking up for those people that love one another and something ridiculous like that. Nah. You are now crossing into the boundaries of the sharia of Islam and having hatred towards that. So that is the hate that takes a person out of Islam. That is the hate that Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab is what? Refer to, referring to. As for natural dislike of the repercussions of something, this is important, write this down. As for the natural repercussions of something, then if a person dislikes that, then they're not kafir. مثلا jihad. كتب عليكم القتال وهو كره لكم قتال has been legislated, prescribed upon you. Jihad. قتال. وهو ماذا? كره لكم And it's disliked to you. When a Muslim is not going to jihad or even those people that remained in Medina when the Prophet went to Tabuk, Tabuk, jihad were they when they wanted to 
stay when they stayed behind. Or not even using those as examples. Like if a person stays behind from jihad and has some sort of this hate, this taste towards it, the believer, the mu'min, doesn't have distaste and hate towards the legislation of jihad. Lacking they have a distaste or dislike for that which comes about, which is loss of life, that person may love his family dearly and he may never return. He may come back injured with an arm cut off and so on and so forth. He may dislike being a captive, a hostage of the enemy. So that is natural dislike for something. Lacking is that dislike because of the sharia of Allah? Because it is a legislation of Allah? La. مثلا, for example, a woman may not like her husband to get married. Rather, all women don't like, no woman likes her husband to get married, a second or third or fourth wife. Sah? Almost non existent, about 99.9%. Can we say that 99.9% of them are kuffar because they hate that legislation? La. Because they don't hate the fact that it is from Allah. But what do they dislike? The, the jealousy that comes about The time that will be shared The wealth that will be shared amongst The different wives That is what they dislike As for it being from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala They won't contradict that They won't go against that That's not what their problem is with Or their issue It is not The fact that Allah jalla wa ala Legislated it in the Quran They have no issue with that I'm talking about the believing women as for the munafiqun and the hypocrites, خلاص, they hate the fact that it is from Allah. Why did Allah legislate? It's not fair. That's what they believe. Like, and I'm talking about the believing women. And they are the majority of the Muslim ummah, may Allah preserve them. That dislike that they have towards that is not dislike of what? Nah. Also, a person might not like to wake up for Qiyamul Layl. A person might find fasting difficult. Some people might find fasting difficult, especially when the day is long. What they have a dislike for or what they find difficult is not the legislation of Allah Jalla wa'ala, it's the fact that they'll be hungry and thirsty. And they won't be able to operate like their usual selves. So that is the disbelief or that is the dislike of something that doesn't take a person outside of the fold of Islam. It is natural. And there are many examples. Who can give an example of that specific type? Tarawih, mathalan. Someone might say, listen, I'm going to this imam because he rushes, but I'm not going to that imam because he's going to stand all night. Does he hate the fact that he's standing for Allah all night? No. He's just lazy. He just doesn't want to stand for an hour and a half. He prefers to stand for half an hour. Khalas, go home. Who can give another example? Waking up for Salat al-Fajr A person might not Like in waking up for Salat al-Fajr A person might not like the fact that they have to get up And they have to Maybe the water's cold Not the fact that they they have to pray And they're gonna pray It's not that But the fact that yani, The laziness side of their Natural self kicks in So they don't want they don't want to make cold water with, with uh, they don't make want to make wudu with cold water or even warm water. طيب. What else? Hmm? The hijab. The hijab from the angle that if she's been ridiculed or she's been harmed because of the hijab, she doesn't have dislike towards the hijab. Or the legislation So I don't think that example comes into it Naam, she'll affect the fact that maybe she's Things are being thrown at her She's been called a ninja She's been called this and that By the kuffar Yes, she'll dislike that obviously No one likes to be insulted But never in a million years will she say I'm going to take the hijab off La. She prefers to be killed, murdered Rather than take the hijab off What else? Now, sometimes a person might be stingy and he might not want to pay zakah. He doesn't want to pay zakah, he just doesn't want to give away wealth. He's not, he doesn't think, why do we have to give away wealth? Like, he just prefers it to be in his hands. 
that's a bit of stinginess, which is a normal human trait. Huh? Get the food in the beard. Uh, nah, maybe. Nah, obviously, when a person's got a big beard, they don't like the food getting in the beard. But they don't like, the, it's not the fact that Allah legislated keeping the beard. That's not what they hate. Like, who can give me an example of the hate that we mentioned earlier on that the Sheikh is referring to? The dislike or the hate for something in the Sharia of Allah that the Sheikh is referring to? Hudud. Punishments. For example, the capital punishment. For example, life for life. Now, in Muslim countries, they say what? In, in our Muslim countries, when, we, when those Muslim countries, when they use that qisas, Life for a life When a murderer gets murdered They'll say it is barbaric Right It is barbaric And they say it's from the stone ages And you're living in medieval times And you're living in You're reading an imaginary book So those sorts of people They have fallen into kufr The act is no, no doubt It is an act of kufr For example Those so called Muslims Who say These books are medieval times You know And it's not I'm not talking about Rogers from across the world I'm talking about from Muslims People claiming to be Muslims saying that these are medieval acts. What else? Another example. What is that an example for? Disobeying his parents. So he hates the fact that Allah has commanded him to. Perhaps that's not really common though. That that I mean, it can happen, but it's not common. Uh, lowering the gaze A person disliking to lower his gaze like More often than not It is because of his desires overcoming him Like in he doesn't do it Because he's thinking Why weren't we allowed to look Why are we not allowed to look More often than not It's not that Especially a person who's got Iman in his heart hmm? What about them? But they will get one one obviously. <laughs> but what? Oh, that, like that's that, that's sick. I don't even want to let them hear that because it's sick. Like in its um. <sighs> what else? What about it? I ha hate. Nah, I'm hating the hijab because it is from the Sharia. Disliking the hijab because it is from the Sharia of Allah. People that use drugs and alcohol. Ah, oh, yeah. Nah, if a person, for example, says, "Listen, why is why are these intoxicants haram?" And I, I actually feel good when I have them, and it helps me cool down and relax. I don't even know why your sharia makes it haram. Yes, that can that can come under it. Yeah. For example, some people might believe that the lesson is not much about how. So, like in that's that 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 doesn't that dislike that they have is. Going to the actual lesson And that obviously isn't kufr They're not hating the fact that Seeking knowledge is not They don't have an issue with that But it's going out And yeah. taking Yeah so No Excellent A person Disliking the fact that It is wajib for Muslims to, Men Muslim men To have their garment above Their ankle To say why it's that's, that's nothing to do with the sugar. The, you know, we should we're praying, we're fasting, but our clothing it's nothing to do with it, what where we wear them up to. So yeah, that can that can come under it. Now the Prophet ﷺ cursed those who use extensions for their eyebrows or wigs and so on. So those that say there there may be some women that dislike the fact that it is haram. Dislike the fact that it is haram. So ala kullin, so all of those examples, Jazakumullah khairin, that you've mentioned come under this. And it is extremely important. It's extremely important that you understand that for, for one's iman to be correct and one's la ilaha illallah to be correct, that they have to love everything that the sharia comes with. Also, there's a last principle that I want you to write down related to this. The Sharia comes with those things that 
are only beneficial to the ummah the sharia commands with the sharia commands with that which is only beneficial to the ummah and it only has benefit or that which the benefit outweighs the harms So the Sharia comes with جلب المصالح أو مصالح محض مصالح محض يعني things that are beneficial from every angle For example Big al-Walidain being dutiful or even before that Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Salah and so on so, يعني in every way it's only beneficial it is يعني a maslah a complete benefit or things that have a bit of harm Lacking the benefit in it outweighs the harms For example jihad Jihad has some harms You may not even come back Lacking those harms Are outweighed greatly by the Benefits By the benefits So we'll uh, stop there inshallah We've only got as you know There's only what How many naqid left? Four or five? Five Naam. So we should complete it within the next two or three lessons, inshallah.